everybody welcome back to my channel today's video is gonna be the second part of my budget series we're gonna be talking about the weekly and monthly expenses and how I organize those if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this in the future and without further ado let's jump into the video so again my budget it's saved on my Google Drive my first tab on my budget is always my overview or financial plans for the entire year it just helps me keep big picture sort of perspective of what's going on but then I have a little bit more detailed breakdown throughout the months we can take a look at our current month which is August so here is my breakdown for the month of August I have a bills column a budgeted column a date due for that particular bill or expense the amount that I actually paid which could be different than what was budgeted the day that I was actually paid, what payment method was used, and any notes that might be helpful. And I also like to keep this little checklist so that I know that something has already been taken care of. And right here I keep a difference uh, between what was budgeted and the actual amount paid. And here's just a comment if, and it tells me if I was on budget or over budget or under budget depending on the difference shown here so let's take a look at some of the things that i have included mm -hmm. here again we always start with the very beginning of the month and it's filtered by the due date so okay. for my rent as i already mentioned it's always due on the first of every month so that would be august 1st um, what was budget is 529.25 for my end and that's the exact amount that was paid um, this is the actual day that was paid which was july 31st here is the method that was used to pay this particular bill in this occasion my rent I didn't actually pay it only because it was um, reduced uh, from a loan that I gave my boyfriend a couple of months back so instead of him paying me back for that month he will pay for my side of the rent so that's why I put here not pay directly so once this is done I check it and then this will automatically populate. I don't need to do anything, which since there's no difference, it's gonna be zero. So we are on budget. And I do that for every single thing. So uh -huh. again, I do have different shades here just to identify different payment methods. So everything that's in purple is either a credit card or it's a bill being paid with a credit okay. card. Um, the reason why I want to remind myself of that is because let's say my internet bill is due on the 3rd which is paid automatically with my credit card. I Again, don't I don't need to go to our internet provider's website and pay for the bill. It just automatically grabs it from my credit um, card. Um. But my credit card is like what's more important because the credit card is what's supporting the payment of my internet bill, which is automated. Um, my Even though this amount says that this is due here, the actual amount that I'm paying, it's um, the credit card that I used to pay that particular bill. So that $32.99 would go under here. That's why the total amount that I have at the end of this breakdown does not include any bills that are being paid with a credit card. Because if I did that, what would happen is that I would be counting expenses twice as much i hope this makes sense but let me give you another example so, so my, my youtube rep bill which is actually a 14.99 charge but at least my side of the bill is only five dollars this five dollars is not actually part of my expenses because i'm not paying it directly with cash a check or my debit card i'm using a credit card to pay for it so my youtube red bill is gonna go under my chase credit card that gives me 1.5 percent cash back um, so then that means this five dollars would be going into that particular card which you can see here i have a budgeted amount and that five dollars will go there so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense not everything of course is paid with credit cards rent i don't pay with a credit card um my savings obviously doesn't get paid with a credit card. My Acorn subscription needs to be paid with a debit card. That's just part of how it's done there. And it makes sense because you are investing money and you don't want to invest money with a credit card because 
if you do, it will be counted as you taking cash out of your credit card, which you, you should never do because the amount of interest that you're going to be paying doesn't really make sense based on the based on the interest that you're going to gain from your investments. Always use a debit card to fund those sort of things. Um, now, everything that's in green, it basically means that it's not a fixed amount. So what does that mean? It just means that the charge may vary. So for the credit cards, I have it as that because even though I do try to stick to a particular budget, things change. So, so all my credit cards have a budget highlighted in green because the amount varies a lot per month. Same with my bills. Oops. My gas varies, my electric bill varies, so those are also going to be highlighted in green. Um, things that do tend to stay on the same, like a strict budget, so I, I just, just leave it as whatever the rest of it's own row um, looks like. So my rent is a fixed amount, my acre subscription fee is a fixed amount, my savings is a fixed amount, my acre's monthly investment is a fixed amount as well. So I also have a total that adds up all the expenses that I'm gonna be having for the entire month. These expenses do include um, my savings, so that's that, and this is the actual expenses that I will be making. Um, again, this does not include any bills that are already being paid with credit cards because the credit card's actual amounts will reflect those bills. So I just have here a legend that reminds me of those things because I could also forget about that sort of thing, like why I have some stuff highlighted in green and why I have some stuff highlighted in purple. So now here I do have a breakdown per week of what I spend on. So for August, I actually start always on Mondays. So for this particular month, um, August 1st was on a Thursday. So I just left it under my July monthly breakdown. So for this particular side of my breakdown, I don't put any sort of bills because that's already accounted for. This is mainly for the very variable amounts that I spend on groceries, eating out, and extra miscellaneous expenses that I didn't account for. Um, so I have my total budgeted per week. It's usually 120 for all of those categories. Um, and I have the actual spent part over here. So let me actually show you one month that I've already completed in full because um, usually by the end of each month, I will make sure that everything is filled out correctly. If you can see here, July 1st to July 7th, wow. I had a budget of $120 and I actually spent $227 with 76 cents. This is for all the categories like eating out, transportation, groceries, and miscellaneous expenses. So I will have the amount that I budgeted for a particular category on column C. And on column C, I will also have the actual expense that I have under a, a certain category. So just as an example, for my eating out budget, I had a $30 budget for that particular week. Um, I went out to Tofu House on that week and I spent $28.65. I also put which payment method I used to pay for that. And if for some reason, which tends to be the case, we split the bill, I went with someone else and we split the bill, I will pu put the total amount that was charged on my car and then who I split the bill with. Just so that I remind myself that if I see an amount charged on my car, it's because of that, because I was splitting it with someone else. So I also went to Blue Jam, which is like a brunch place around the area, and I spent $34.80. So at the end of the week, once I know that there's no more expenses that are going to take place, I'm just going to add up the total amount of expenses, which in this case comes to $63.45, and I'm going to subtract that from what was budgeted. So then at the end of the week, I'm just going to keep that total amount that I was either under budget or over budget on this side on column D. If I was over budget, I will color that as orange. 
and if I was under budget, I will color that cell in green. So again, another example, I have a transportation budget of $30. That particular week, I didn't have any transportation expenses, meaning that I already had my bus top car full, so I didn't need to refill it. Um, I didn't use the car, so I didn't have to fill it up. So my budget I didn't spend any part of that particular budget. So I had $30 on their budget. Um, for groceries, I had a $30 budget. Now you're going to see how much I can spend on groceries sometimes. So in this particular week, I went to Costco and I spent a total of $96.01. I also went to Super King, another supermarket, and I spent $27.87. So if you're adding that, that's a total of $123.88. So if I subtract my $30 budget minus what I actually spent, I'm over budget by $93.88. Again, I always try to remind myself to keep track of what payment method I'm using because it's just good to always know what you're spending on each credit card because it can be very common that somebody could be using your credit card for something. Maybe somebody was able to get a hold of your credit card number and you should be knowing every day what charges are made on each of your credit cards. So again, I also do like to add any cashback that I get for any reason and from any entity. So for my Capital One credit card, I got $4.06 back, which I just put back into the credit card, meaning that you put it towards what you owe that credit card. Um, I also got from my Capital One savings account, I got an interest of $14.08. Um, and Capital One savings accounts actually do pay really good interest compared to other banks. So you should definitely check it out. At the time that I'm doing this video, they give 2% back on any amount of 10000 or more on their savings account. So that money that I got for that interest, I just put it back into the savings account. And then for my Chase credit card, the one that gives me 1.5 cash back, I got $10.19. And I put that money into my Bank of America checking account. So again, if you notice right here, the total that I'm either under or over budget, it's $79.43. And in this case, because you notice that it's red and negative or in parentheses, which means it's a negative amount, I am over budget by $79.43. Over here, the actual spend, I do not take into the consideration any extra money that I receive throughout the month. So I wouldn't put into this um, particular total, I wouldn't add the cash back that I got or the interest that I got back um, for my savings account. All I'm adding is just like actual expenses that I made on that week. So now I will show you how I balance myself out. So I am over budget. So what happened is that I happened to have a week in July where I was under budget, meaning that I had some money left over that I had not spent or that I had just gathered from maybe interest or credit card cashback or whatever the case was. So let's go to my July 22nd and 28th week so that you can see. So on the 22nd and 28th, which is this particular week, July 22nd to July 28th, I had this much extra money. Now, the main reason why I had this much extra money that week is because I had a cashback reward just for opening a Bank of America credit card. The cashback reward was $200. I think if you spend maybe $1,000 within three months, which I met the requirements, um, so I got $200 back. I also got $22 um, from my Bank of America credit card and I was also under budget for my eating out budget, um, transportation and groceries. So all of that amounted to a big um, extra money that I had for that week. So what I did was simply subtract $79.43 
right here and I put a note of where I'm taking that $79.43. So I put a note of extra going to deficit for July 1st to July uh, 7th. So once I have the funds, I'm going to go back to the week that I was over budget, which is this one. And I'm going to say what week I took that from because I like to keep record of everything. And this fund is from my July 22nd to July 28th week. So I just know at this point that there's not going to be any remaining over or under balance. So there you go. So this is how I balance myself out just within the funds that I have throughout the year. Now let's go to my second week of July just so that we can stay on the same page. So for this particular week, again, I always have the same budget. It's $120. It's a very rough estimate, but it works for now. So in this particular week, I did have quite a lot of expenses on my extra category or miscellaneous category. I only have a $30 budget. Um, however, I didn't have any expenses for my car wash budget, clothes, or hygienic products. I did have, however, quite a bit of expenses on my other or extras expenses. I only have a $7 budget for this week. However, I spent a total of $252.94. And that's split between a Target um, expense that I did, which is I bought my tripod and I put it here on my notes so that I remind myself what did I do with that money. Um, I used my Chase credit card, 1.5% cashback. And I also did another Target purchase um, for sunscreen. I had run out of sunscreen at the time, so I wanted to buy a good quality sunscreen. Now that it's summer and I wait for the bus for quite a long time, I wanted to make sure that I got a good quality sunscreen that wouldn't um, give me an allergic reaction. So it's quite, a, quite expensive, but I really, really like that uh, particular sunscreen I chose. And then I also purchase a laptop. It's a Mac laptop. It's not as cheap as this is, but my boyfriend's co-worker and friend was trying to sell an old laptop that he had. He let us try it out and I really liked it, especially because I am trying to film more videos for you guys and just develop my filming and editing skills. So I really wanted a Mac um, and the price was pretty good. He was going to charge us $350. So between me and my boyfriend, we split that amount. Um, he was kind enough to help me with that. And I just sent that to him through to my boyfriend through Venmo so that he could pay his friend. Um, but Venmo is connected to my checking account, so I, I always put the main source that's supporting my Venmo account. So because I already knew just from buying the laptop that I was going to be very over budget in general, I tried to limit myself a lot on the other categories. So for eating out, I only went out once that week and it was for $12.50 only. For transportation, I did have to refill my tap car. I put all $30 that I had budgeted for that category into my tap car and I came out even for that category. And then groceries, I didn't buy any groceries for that week. So the groceries budget, if you notice that I did spend a lot on a particular week, I did, I do try to limit myself on the following weeks because I, I know, know I, I should, should have, have enough groceries to keep me making meals since I did spend so much. There has to be some stuff that's good at oh. home. But even with limiting myself on some of those categories, I, I still did. was very over budget. So exactly 175 with 44 cents over budget. So again, I have to wait here until I had some extra money from any upcoming weeks. Okay. So as you can see, I did end up being able to, to zero out this um, over budget situation. So what happened was that again, on July 15, I was able to get $35 and I, the reason is because in this particular week, July 15 to July 21st, I was under budget by $35. So I had $35 to spare. So I deducted the $35 and I put what week I was putting it towards to 
and then I deducted the $35 from my budget, which meant that I was still $140.44 over budget. So I still needed to wait longer to see if I could take that money from an upcoming week. So again, on July 22nd and July 28th, like I mentioned, I got a lot of extra money because of that credit card that I opened where I got $200 cash back. So I was easily able to take the money from there. So $140.44 was reducted from what I had extra on July 22nd to July 28th week. And so I adding all of that up gave me a no balance, which that's always my goal. My goal is to have weeks where there is no balance of under or over budget so obviously by now we know that july 22nd to july 28th was a pretty good week i was um under budget so now the last week of july which was july 29th to august again, 4th my budget was 129 dollars and i did a little bit of extra expenses on amazon as you can see here that's a very um high amount so the reason why it was so high is because I bought some hiking shoes for my upcoming trip. I was over budget by $90.02 on that particular category. For my eating out budget, I was over budget slightly by $1.65, which I don't think it's crazy. And I was under budget on uh, my transportation category as well as on my groceries category. Again, I didn't buy any groceries this week. So it was a pretty good savings um, category. But even with all of that and adding my Capital One um, savings interest that I received, it w I was still under budget by $51.06. Unfortunately, at this point, I had already used everything that I had uh, remaining from this awesome week of July 22nd to July 28th. Um, the reason why is because the remaining $66.17 that I had um, after deducting the other two weeks in July that I was over budget went to a very old March um, off week where I, I still need to balance that week out but it was very big because I got a speeding ticket so I put my speeding ticket on my expenses because it's still considered an extra expense so I just put it on um, my March uh, a particular week of March um, expenses so yeah so I didn't have any balance so I just left it as is I left it with a deficit and then I continue with August thankfully on the first weeks of August I was able to get some of the money now one of the main reasons why I have this much cashback right here if you notice on row 52 the cashback for my Chase credit card was $146.08 that's usually not the amount that I would receive but I happened to help my mom buy a car and we paid the car in full. It was a used car. It was less than $10,000. So I just paid it in full and this was the amount that I got as cashbacks, $146, uh, which is not a lot considering the amount the that the car costs, but it's something. So because I had that extra money, I just took the $51.06 of deficit that I needed to cover my last week of July. Again, I put what week that's going for. I go back to my July tab and I find that particular week that I'm trying to cover. And that $51 is going to go here. I make a comment of where that money is coming from. And then finally, I have no balance. So for the month of July, none of the weeks, as you can see here, have a deficit um, in any way so again I do have some reminders here just in case there's something that I need to return something that I need to still review or so yeah guys I did this or I do this for every single month so far for this year you can see here you can see all the months that I filled out um, and as the months go by I try to better the way that I'm doing things and that I'm accounting for things there are things that I didn't used to do, but um, I now do because I feel like it is helpful to keep myself accountable and organized. Um, there are things that I used to do that I don't do anymore because I just feel like it was redundant or it didn't really add any value to what I look at. Um, again, I'm going to leave a template of this entire portion of the 
budget that I created um, on the description below. So if you want to use it, you're more than welcome to. Um, like I mentioned on my last video, you guys should always try to customize your own budget templates as much as you can. If you can, just add whatever you think it's important for you, whatever expenses that you feel you're always making. If there's a category that you're making, for example, if you're a fisherman in mm -hmm. fishing supplies, for example, and you do it on a constant basis, then you're going to know that should be a category on your budget. If you travel a lot then you should have a travel budget since it's going to be something that's constantly going to appear on your expenses so just in general just customize whatever you're using so that it works for you um doesn't matter if you're using a piece of paper if you're using a google sheet if you're, if you're using a fancier tool um just as long as you can move it around so that it works for you um, i think um. that's usually for the best. Thank you for sticking to the end of this video. Like I mentioned on the first part of this series, I'm gonna be having a link so that you can download the template of this budget that I'm using. If you're interested and you enjoy how I organize myself, then feel free to use this template for your own personal finances. The template will have comments on each cell so that you know how to fill them out. If you have any questions about how to fill this template out, feel free to leave your comments on the video below so that I can reply to them. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe to this channel so that I can create more videos like this for you in the future. Don't forget to stay inspired to always be financially organized in your life. I'm planning on making more budget videos in the future because honestly, it's one of the types of videos that I watch the most on YouTube. So I have a lot of things to say about the matter. If you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And as always, I'll see you on my next video, guys. Bye.